Okay, so this is part three of the tutorial where we cover an example of the newton raphson power flow method, okay? And this example comes from the Granger and Stevens' Power Systems Analysis book. This is example 9.4 in section 9.3. Okay, so we kind of began this series by introducing the equations that were presented in this book and we said well don't worry about these equations yet just follow along and uh, look at how this method is done overall uh, we took the partial derivative of uh, these equations with respect to x1 and x2 uh, we took the we determined the jacobian matrix um, and we said well the jacobian matrix is simply a matrix of the partial derivatives. Uh, we had some initial values, then these initial values were presented in the book and we used these initial values to determine our first initial mismatch and we also used the initial values to determine our zeroth iteration for the Jacobian matrix which is basically plugging in the initial values into the partial derivatives and determining the result. Okay, now let's get into the exciting part. Now the exciting part is that uh, we already have this Jacobian matrix, right? So if we take this Jacobian matrix, right, for the zeroth iteration, and we multiply this Jacobian matrix by our initial uh, values of dx1 and dx2 for the zeroth iteration, um, we will get this right here, our mismatch. So dg1 of the zeroth value and dg2 of the zeroth value. Okay, so this is essentially the meat of the newton raphson method. Now what we have is this, right? We have this term there. We have the Jacobian matrix and we have the Jacobian matrix for the zeroth iteration, which is just plugging in our initial values, right? And we also have these terms right here. We have uh, delta G1 and delta G2, or our mismatch for the initial values. But what we don't have is the change of X1 for the zeroth iteration and the change of x2 for the zeroth iteration. So we have this guy, we have this guy, we have to find what this, essentially you have to figure out what delta x1 is and delta x2 is. Well, if we solve this like a basic linear algebra problem, how would we do it? Well, it's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, what if we just multiply both sides of these equations by the inverse of the Jacobian matrix? So what if we take the Jacobian matrix, find the inverse of the Jacobian matrix, uh, and we multiply that to both sides of the equation, right? And, and if we had done that, we know by linear algebra that A times the inverse, well, that's just going to equal one or the unity matrix. That's going to simply equal one. And, uh, and the only thing that's going to be left on the left-hand side of the equations are these guys there and the right side of the equation well we already knew what this value is and we could determine the inverse of the Jacobian matrix uh, here so that brings us to the next set of equation which is that delta x1 term and delta x2 of the zeroth iteration those guys are equal to delta g1 of the zeroth and delta g2 of the zeroth multiply that by remember the jacobian matrix we said was four zero zero and four but now we have to take the inverse of this jacobian matrix so now let's put these values in right so delta g1 delta g1 for the zeroth iteration is equal to negative 0 0.60, delta G2 for the zeroth iteration is equal to negative 0 0.130, negative 0 0.60, negative 0 0.30. Uh, multiply that, okay, inverse. Now according to the book, if we take this matrix here and we multiply it by the inverse of this matrix there, then 
we should get a value of negative 0 0.150 and negative 0 0.075. Okay, let's look at what we actually solved for. So we said that the change of x1 for the zeroth iteration is equal to negative 0 0.150 and the change of x2 for the zeroth iteration is equal to negative 0 0.75, okay? Which uh, also, by the way, matches the book because that's where I get these answers from. Now, that's not your answer. That's just a part of the answer, is that we have the basic building blocks for the next set of iterations. So the next iteration we have to do that same exact process all over again is uh, is this we have delta x1 but now we have the next set of iteration and that's why we advance the superscript to one that is equal to x1 of the zeroth plus delta x1 of the zero we know what x1 of the zeroth was well that was just simply our initial condition right uh, and which our initial condition, if you all remember, was zero. So our initial condition of x1 was just equal to zero. So that is gonna equal zero plus delta x1, which we calculated as negative 0 0.150, which means the next set of iteration is negative 0.150, okay? And same thing with x2 for the next iteration is equal to x1 for the next, uh, the zeroth, plus delta x2 of the zeroth. And that is equal to, well, x1, um, sorry, this is x2. So x2 for the zeroth, we said that that was equal to 1, if you remember correctly. Uh, x1, right here, x2 is equal to 1, right? So, go back over here. We know that x2 was equal to 1, plus now uh, the change of x2, which we said is this guy right here, is equal to negative 0 0.075. And that is gonna equal 0 0.925. All right, so now we have the building blocks for the second iteration. So I'm gonna highlight that here now we have the building blocks for the second and this will conclude part three now if you haven't already please go ahead and subscribe by clicking on the bottom right corner of the screen and if you have questions there's a link at the bottom of this page for a q a forum and in this forum you can go uh, and ask uh, as many questions as you like and hopefully the community will respond to your questions so that we all can learn and understand this stuff more intuitively. This video was brought to you by generalpack.com, making power systems intuitive.